Hello viewers. In this session, we are going to talk about uh, the minimum, maximum, and the point of infraction for functions of one independent variable. So we consider a function defined in terms of one in, uh, independent variable, y is equals to f of x. And suppose that uh, the graph of uh, that function is of this kind. Uh, it is decreases from point A to B, then turns at point B, and from point B to C it's an increasing function, and then turns again at point C, then decreases uh, to point D like that. So you'll find that uh, if you move from point A to B, the rate of change of y per unit change in x decreases or rather it's negative y decreases per unit increase in x y increasing y decreases with increasing x but from uh, point b to point c y increases with increasing x and then the function turns again so we call the points such as b and c the turning points and these are the kind of points we want to look at in this session. So we say that uh, as one moves from the, along the curve from point A to B, the value of y decreases as x increases, uh, but as one moves from point B to C, y increases with increasing x. The point B therefore, the point B here, is therefore a transition between the points uh, or between the region where y decreases with increasing x and the region where y increasing increases with increasing x. So such a point, we are going to call it a stationary point or sometimes we shall call it a, a turning point of a curve. So for the above function, there are two stationary points, that is point B and C, as we can see. Point B and C, so there are two stationary points. At point B, Y attains the minimum value, so we shall call it uh, a relative of the local minimum. Whereas at point C, Y attains a maximum value, so we shall call it a local maximum or a local or a relative maximum. So in general, a function Y is equals to f of x is said to have a local maximum at a point x is equals to a if and only if the value of the function uh, at any point x is less than or equals to the value of the function at evaluated at point a for all values of x in some open interval uh, containing the point x is equals to a. So similarly, we shall say that uh, the function has a minimum value or a local minimum at a point A if the value of the function evaluated at any point X is greater than or equals to the value of the function evaluated at X is equals to A uh, for all values of X in uh, some open interval containing the point X is equals to A. So if we draw the tangent lines at point B and C, at point B and C, we will notice that uh, the tangent lines will be parallel to the x to the x-axis. This will mean that the rate of change of y per unit change in x at the stationary point is zero. That is, dy dx is equal to zero. So whenever we are looking for stationary points of a function we find the points where the rate of change of that function is zero. So in this case, to find uh, the stationary point, you differentiate the function y with respect to the x, and then equate the derivative to zero and solve the resulting equation. Let's take an example. Suppose you are still to find the stationary point of the function y is equals to x cubed minus 3x plus 2. 
So the first thing you have to note is that uh, we want to find the point where the rate of change of y per unit change in x is zero. So in this case, we differentiate y with respect to x and then equate the derivative to zero. So we find the derivative dy dx and equate the derivative to zero, then solve the resulting equation. So when we differentiate this with respect to x, we get 3x squared minus 3. So at stationary point, dy dx is zero, so we equate x square 3x squared minus 3 to 0. This will give us 3x squared is equals to 3, from which x squared is 1, and x is the square root of 1, which is plus or minus 1. So there are two stationary points here. We have x is equals to minus 1, and x is equals to positive 1. So there are two stationary points. Now, after we find the stationary point, the next thing is to determine the nature. Is the point a maximum or is it a minimum? So if we consider the function uh, y is equals to f of x shown here, and consider passing, moving along the curve from point A to B all the way to C, you find that uh, at point B you'll be passing through the minimum value. So the point B is a local minimum. So if we do not uh, by S the slope of Y is equals to F of X at any point, then we see that uh, between point A and B, the slope is negative. That is here, the slope on this side is negative. At point B, the slope here is zero. And if you move from point B to C, because Y is an increasing function here, the slope is positive. So you see, if you consider moving from point A through B to C, then the slope changes from negative values, from negative to zero, then to positive values. In this case, we say that the rate of change of the slope is positive as you move, uh, as you pass through through the minimum point. The, the rate of change of slope is positive as you pass through the minimum point because by convention this is like moving in a positive direction. But uh, the slope is, remember the slope is dy dx. So when we write ds by dx, and this is the same as the second order derivative of y with respect to x. Meaning that uh, as you pass through the minimum point, the second order derivative of y with respect to x is positive. So if we want to determine the nature of a stationary point, then we find the second order derivative and compute its value at that point. If the value is positive, then uh, the point is a local minimum. If we argue the same way, then you'll find that uh, for uh, a, a local maximum, the rate of change of the slope will be negative. Because in this case, we'll be having a curve of this kind. So the slope at this side is negative, then zero at this point, and uh, uh, sorry, this is positive then uh, negative on this side. So you're moving, it is like moving from positive values to zero to negative values, moving in this direction. That is by, the, by convention, moving in a negative direction, moving in a negative direction. So as you pass through the local maximum, the rate of change of slope is negative. That is d squared y by dx squared is negative at uh, the maximum point. Now, if on the other hand, 
the rate of change of slope that is d squared y by dx squared is zero then the point is known as the point of inflection this is the point where the curve uh, tends to turn but it does not turn completely say you have a curve of this kind uh, then at some point here it tends to turn but it does not turn completely the point where the rate of change is zero the rate of change of the curve is zero the curve tends to turn maybe this is not a very good diagram uh maybe you have something like this so the point here where the curve tends to turn but it does not turn we call it a point of inflection it is called a point of inflection so at that point d squared y by dx squared is equals to zero so there are three stationary points we have the local maximum something that looks like that a local minimum this point then the inflection point at all these points dy by dx is equals to zero but uh, at the local minimum d squared y by dx squared is positive at the local maximum d squared y by dx squared is negative and the, at the point of inflection d squared y by dx squared is equals to zero so let's consider uh, the function that we had considered earlier in the previous example the stationary points are the points where the derivative is zero we had already obtained that those are x is one and x is minus one suppose now we want to classify this we have dy by dx is equals to three x squared minus three so we find the second order derivative differentiating this we get 6x so the we now evaluate uh, the value of this at each of the stationary point we see that when x is 1 we'll get uh, d squared y by dx squared is equals to 6 times 1 which is positive 6 you see this is positive we're interested with the sign here the quantity is positive and that means that the point is a local minimum you see the second order derivative is positive the point is a local minimum if we evaluate at the other point x is equals to minus one we get six times minus one which is minus six so the the value is negative and therefore the point x is equals to minus one is a local maximum we have a second example here we are trying to find and classify the stationary points of this function you'll find that uh, for this function y is equals to x plus 5 multiplying e raised to power negative x this is a product of two functions so we are going to use the product rule we can set u to be x plus 5 so that du by dx is equals to 1 and v as e raised to power negative x so that dv by dx is equals to minus e raised to power negative x so now by applying the product rule we multiply u by the derivative of v and v by the derivative of u then add so dy by dx will be x plus 5 multiplying negative e raised to power negative x then plus e raised to power negative x multiplying 1 so this one we can can be simplified to minus x minus 4 multiplying e raised to power 
negative x. So we now equate this to 0 minus x minus 4, multiplying e raised to the power negative x is 0. Now the exponential function is never 0. This means that uh, minus x minus 4 is 0, and so x is equal to 4. This one has only one stationary point. So next, uh, we need to find the, this is, this is x is minus 4, not positive 4. Not that uh, x is minus 4, not positive 4. So next, we need to determine the nature of the stationary point. So to classify this, we find the second order derivative. Again, we are going to use the product rule of differentiation. So this time we set u to be minus x minus 4. So du by dx is minus 1 and v is e raised to power negative x. So dv by dx is equal to minus e raised to power negative x. So we multiply u with the derivative of v and v with the derivative of u. So when we do that, we get uh, unsimplify, that is x minus x minus 4 multiplying e raised to power minus x, then e raised to power negative x multiplying minus 1. When we, but we simplify, we get uh, x plus 3 multiplying e raised to power x. We now find the value of this when x is minus 4 at our stationary point. So this will give us minus 4 plus 3 e raised to power 4, which gives us negative e raised to power 4. This quantity is negative, meaning that the point is Aroko maximum. The point is Aroko maximum. So notice how we compute, uh, we determined the stationary point and uh, how we determine the initial. To find the stationary point, we find dy dx, equate the derivative to zero, and solve the resulting equation. Once we have the stationary points, the next thing is to determine the nature of each stationary point. So this is done by uh, working out the second order derivative and computing its value at each of the stationary point. When the value of the second order derivative is positive, then the, second, the stationary point is a local minimum. If on the other hand, the value is positive, then the stationary point is a local minimum. And if it is zero, then the point is an inflection point. Thank you for watching.